searching. Oh, good morning, Lingo Kids. I'm Libby, your curiosity coach. Good morning, Lisa. Why do you do that? Why do I stretch? Hmm. Let's find out. When you stretch, it gets your blood flowing. Huh? It wakes up your muscles and your brain too. Best of all, it feels good. It's good to stretch every day. I brush my teeth every day. That's great. Something you do every day is called a daily routine. Let's start our daily stretching routine with the yawn stretch. And this is the windy tree stretch. Be sure to take it slow so you don't hurt yourself. Put your arms up high like a big tree, then move with the wind. Whoa. Now inhale and move to the other side. Exhale. Inhale. Excellent. This is the I don't know stretch. Push your shoulders all the way up to your ears and say, I don't know. Then lower them all the way down. I don't know. I still don't know. Ready for the downward dog stretch? <laughs> it's for people too. Let me show you. Start on your hands and knees, like this. Now curl your toes under your feet. Then lift up high. Your bottom points towards the sky and your head is between your arms. Inhale. Inhale, exhale. Now go back to your hands and knees, and then sit back. You did the downward dog. I feel great. Me too. It's nice to take care of yourself by doing things that are good for you. I'm curious. What else can you do to take care of yourself every day? Think about it. See you next time for more Curiosity Time. He's a huge dinosaur and a known carnivore. He can scare anything with a mighty big roar. But he's got two tiny hands. Cowies. Has two tiny arms. Cowie's T Rex won't do any harm. He can't even scrub his back when he takes a bubble bath. Cowie's T Rex has two tiny arms. Cowie's T Rex has two tiny arms. Cowie's T Rex won't do any harm. He can't even tie his shoes. That's what Cowie helps him do. Cowie's T Rex has two tiny
Oh, look, it's Billy. I wonder where Cowie is. Play. I think Billy is waiting for something. Oh, maybe that's it. I wonder... Of course! You're going to build a robot for the contest, right? Oh, this is going to be fun! I think Billy is saying it's time to build, not to play. Angry Cowie. He just wants to build a great robot. <laughs> oh, Cowie. I don't know if that's such a good idea. Oh boy, I didn't say anything.
have to be practical, Billy. The contest is about to start. Why don't we give him a chance? Don't worry, Billy. The rest of the robots aren't so good. I was wrong. <laughs> math test. What is the mass of the universe? Correct. Strength test. What is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Correct. Focus, focus. Math test. You got it? Oh. How about this? You got it? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Poor robot. Ha <laughs> ha 
Congratulations, everyone! Bye-bye! Let's learn emotions with Billy. Billy is happy. Billy is sad. Billy is angry. Billy is scared. Let's see how he feels. Billy is... Come on, buddy. Happy. Good job. Billy is... Angry. Perfect. Billy is... Scared. Good job. Billy is... Sad. Congratulations! Bravo! You won the ball! some fun. Say hi to Kelly and Elliot. They'll be helping us later. Today we're going to use some fun kitchen tools. And we're going to make fancy, fancy mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. I think we better warm up first. Why are we doing this? This recipe takes a lot of strength. Somebody almost might get hurt. What? <laughs> Time to wash our hands. Step one is wash the potatoes. Now we peel the potatoes. Here's the potato peeling. Thanks. This is how people peel potatoes. Watch out for the sharp edges, Dad. 
now you cut the potatoes. The knife is too sharp for me. Uh -oh. Yep, safer for grown-ups to use. Next, we boil the potatoes. The stove is hot. While we wait for the potatoes, do you want to learn a dance? It's called the mashed potato. Really? Let's go over here. So your feet go in and out, and your arms go up and down. Okay. I've got it. You got it. Go, Kelly. Nice move, Kelly. The potatoes are ready. Yes. We've got to drain them. Bye-bye, water. Now we mash the potatoes. This is a masher. It's fun because you press it on the potatoes and then the potatoes get all mashed. You can also use a fork to mash potatoes. This takes muscles. Now we add warm milk and butter. And salt. Those look perfect. Now we can turn it into fancy mashed potatoes. Bring on the toppings. Butter. Grated cheese. Bacon, yum. Green onions. Parsley. Gravy. Broccoli. And peas, please. Yum. Let's go. This is good. Mm -hmm. Look, I made one for Cowie and one for Elliot. Nice. We, we mash. You're going to love these fancy mashed potatoes. You can make it too. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Check out the recipe. Catch you in the kitchen. Hi, Lingo Kids. I'm Libby, your curiosity coach. Hi, Lisa. Hi, my nose tickles. Uh, 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 wow, that was a big sneeze. <laughs> Everyone sneezes in their own way. Really? Uh, no. What is a sneeze? Hmm. Let's find out. A sneeze is a nose cleaner. If your nose tickles, that means there's something in there that your body doesn't like. Your brain says, time to sneeze, and you get it out. You might sneeze because you have allergies. Allergies? Allergies are things that make some people sneeze, but not everyone. Maybe we're allergic to... Dust! Oops! Hmm. Dust is all over our homes. It gets in the air, and then in your nose. Can you help find any dust in your home? You can help clean it up. It's fun! Pollen can make you sneeze, too. Pollen is in flowers and trees. And bees eat it. Buzz! If you look really closely, you can see pollen in the center of a flower. 
Uh-oh, you got pollen in your nose. Well, my nose didn't touch the flower. Pollen is in the air. You breathe it into your nose. Some people have allergies to cats and dogs. Oh, no! Oh, yes. Sometimes you sneeze because you're sick. But guess what? Sneezing helps get the germs out of your nose. Those germs really fly! You don't want to get your germs on anyone else. Use a tissue to cover your nose and mouth when you sneeze. Like this. <laughs> if you don't have a tissue, sneeze into your upper arm. That way you catch the sneeze and all its germs. Remember to wash your hands after you sneeze. Yeah! And your upper arm if you sneeze there to clean off any germs. Why else do we sneeze? Sometimes you sneeze when you walk into bright sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you sneeze when you smell pepper. Really? <sighs> it sounds silly, but it happens. Our bodies are amazing. They know just what to do. I'm curious. What other amazing things does your body do? Think about it. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. For more curiosity time. Let's build a robot. Body. Pick the body parts. Head. Leg. Leg. Arm. Head. Head. Arm. Head. Color the body. Blue. Red. Time to energize. Head. Time to energize. Arms. Legs. Make the robot dance. Have you ever said something and then wished you could take it back? Welcome to Storytime by Lingo Kids. Today's story is a tale to remind us that words matter. Subscribe or follow us so you never miss one of our episodes. There once was a little boy named Bobby. For most of his life, Bobby spent his days at his mother's hair salon, listening to the ladies' gossip. And then he said, Did you see her dress? I'm not one to judge, but... <laughs> but today, Bobby's life changed. It was his first day of school. Bobby met his teacher, Miss Polly. 
She was short and round with twinkling eyes and a warm smile. The children sat in a circle to play a game. In the game, one child went around the circle until he tapped another child's head. That child chased the first one, trying to tag him before he reached the empty seat. After a few rounds, a boy tapped Bobby's head. Bobby sprang up and tagged the boy before he could get back to the empty seat. Ha ha ha! You're slow! The other boy frowned. Now, Bobby went around the circle. When he tapped another child's head, Bobby easily made it to the empty seat before being caught. He looked around and laughed. What a bunch of turtles! Ha 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 ha! Miss Polly didn't hear Bobby's unkind words, but the children did, and it made them sad. Suddenly, a bell rang. It was time for music. Miss Polly had a bin of small drums. She waddled around, handing each child a drum. Bobby leaned over to the girl next to him and snortled. Huh, <laughs> Miss Polly walks like a duck. The little girl glanced at Bobby, shrugged, and started hitting her drum. After music class, the children went to the lunchroom. The school cook was scooping soup from a big hot pot. As Bobby got closer, he noticed the cook's face was bright red from the steam. Bobby had an amusing thought, and he shared it with the boy standing in front of him. Look at the cook. He's as red as a lobster. <laughs> the boy didn't laugh. The cook was a very nice man. He didn't want to hurt his feelings. Bobby got his soup and sat down to eat. After a while, another bell rang. It was time to leave. The children grabbed their backpacks and went outside. Bobby's mother was waiting for him. Hello, darling. Hi, Mama. Tell me about your first day. We played a fun game, and I was the fastest runner. The other kids were as slow as turtles. Bobby's mother looked at her son and gently said, You can be proud, but don't put other people down, please. Bobby hesitated and then continued, We played drums. Miss Polly is short and waddles like a duck. Bobby's mother looked at him with concern. Bobby, that's rude. You need to respect your teachers. Bobby was quiet. When they got home, Bobby's mother started to prepare dinner. As she stirred a pot, Bobby let out a big chuckle. Ha <laughs> ha! What's so funny? Today, the school cook made hot soup. His face was red like a lobster. <laughs> Bobby's mother stopped stirring and put her hands on her hips. Bobby, those words are not nice. They can cause problems. Bobby looked confused. They're just words, like the women gossiping at your salon. It doesn't hurt anyone, right? Bobby's mother shook her head. Words are more powerful than you think. They ate their dinner. Afterwards, Bobby's mother read him a story and tucked him into bed. Good night, dear. Sweet dreams. Good night, Mama. The next morning, as Bobby entered his classroom, he let out a yell. Ah! All of the children were turtles. What? How? He ran to find his teacher, but stopped with a gasp. <gasps> there was Miss Polly, and she was a duck. Ah! Did my words do this? Bobby had one more place to go, the lunchroom. He peeked through the kitchen doors. Sure enough, a red lobster was stirring a pot of potatoes. What have my words done? Never in a million years did Bobby think his words would cause such harm. 
if he could take back those awful words, he would. Just then, he felt a hand on his shoulder. Someone was shaking him. Bobby, wake up. It's time for school. Huh? You were having a bad dream. Bobby sat up and hugged his mother. I'm never going to say mean things about anyone again. Bobby's mother hugged him sweetly and said, You've learned a lot on your first day of school. And I'm going to make sure the ladies in my salon watch their words also. And with that, Bobby and his mother got ready for the day. We hope you liked the story. Think about the words you say. Do you feel their power? Think about it. Goodbye until next time. More songs, activities, and podcasts on our YouTube channels. And the full interactive adventure in the Lingo Kids app. That was fun!